Okay, uh, thanks for that, Ray. Uh, welcome, everybody. So I'm Giles. This is Rasto. Um, I'm going to sort of do a few slides, giving an overview of VPP. So I guess it's been alluded to today. I know earlier I talked about you know BPF and XDP. Talk about vectors. Well, but I'll give you a sort of overview of that. Um, then Rasto is going to go into Contiv VPP, which is a CNI plugin that we built using VPP. Uh, where I guess we're about to disagree with Chiara on and. Um, on the thing about using the kernel to connect containers. Sorry, guys, no. Uh, we should keep it in user space. Um, but hey, I, I a bit of controversy is always good. So, so what is VPP? Um, so we said the universal data plane, and really, um, you know, the history of this, the sort of genesis of this, was it, it came out of Cisco. Um, it was initially like a sort of punt path software forwarder, um, but then we realised it was pretty good, and we should probably open source it. So it's been open source through the Linux Foundation. So it's part of the LFN, Linux Foundation Networking sort of umbrella. Um, the key thing, and again, sort of, if you remember earlier, um, you know, with BPF and XTP, this thing of, oh, if you want to extend it, you have to build helpers, and the helpers have to make it into the kernel. So, you know, there's, a, there's an IP lookup, but there isn't a bridge lookup yet. And probably the key reason that we've done everything in user space is the fact that that gives us that feature velocity. So if we want to put a new forwarding plane in, we don't have to wait for Linux to bless it. We can just push it straight in because it's user space. The throughput, you know, that's, that's the magic of vectors, which we'll come on to as well. Um, initially, in fact, it ran on PowerPC, but it now runs on ARM and, of course, x86, which is where you'll see most of it. Um, the scope, so in fact, the, the three bullets are nicely the opposite way up from the three on the picture. Um, so the scope is the network I.O. Um, I mean, typically we're using DPTK there, though, you know, we're open to other things. There's been other suggestions today, again, with things like XTP. There are some native drivers, I think, in VPP as well. Um, VPP itself really knows about the packet processing, so about your actual forwarding. But then, of course, the key is we've got to set it up, so you need some kind of a management layer um, you know, as, as the control plane. Um, but we don't live in isolation, so this is kind of just to, to give you a picture of the Linux Foundation networking and associated stuff and where where the whole FIDO VPP thing sits. So VPP itself, when it got open source, we called it FIDO, FDIO, Fast Data. You can't pronounce FDIO, so, so it's a dog. Um, so, so we sit here in the data plane. Tip, you know, of course, we sit on top of an operating system and hardware. Um, some of these other projects have been talked about already. So for example, I used to work on Open Daylight quite a bit. Um, <coughs> that's been presented. Onos has as well, which is another STN controller. I know, I think Emma's talking about OPNFV stuff after this. Um, ONAP, strangely, no one's here talking about ONAP. So, I don't know, has anyone here heard of ONAP? Well, maybe that's why nobody's talking about it. There's only like four people with hands up. Um, so, ONAP basically is, is kind of a telco-ish thing. It sits on top of Open Daylight in terms of how it programs the network, but it's very much about how you provision telco-type services. So, it's all unbelievably dull. Um, I'm glad not to be working on it anymore. Um, but I, I guess, you know, in terms of buzz, and the room's, the room's quite quiet because we should have stuck the word Kubernetes all over everything to get everybody in. <laughs> you know, really, Kubernetes is where it's at. And if you think about the stack now in container sense, what you're really saying is that your, your CNI plugin really does this bit, the network controller. And Kubernetes is really all about the orchestration and you know, how do you deploy pods onto different nodes and how do you figure out where to put things and sort of, you know, manage the life cycle. So, the projects we have in, in FIDO, BPP itself, of course, the core. There's a bunch of different other projects around packet processing. So things like you know, Open Data Plane, P4 has been mentioned a few times already, I think. Um, there's even you know, sort of information-centric networking and that kind of stuff. Um, I mentioned, as I said, we typically run on top of DPUK in terms of the network I.O. Um, and then at the top layer, the, the management agent. So, um, you know, Honeycomb really is, is virtu about virtual machines. It's really a cut-down version of Open Daylight so that you can manage um, effectively an instance of VPP running on a node. But I guess the way I think about it is in that kind of VM world, you're still probably thinking about things like NetConf and Yang and BGP. You're very much in that kind of, I am a host, I am a router, whatever. So using those kind of more, I hate to use the word legacy, those more like legacy approaches for configuring things. Because really, if you think about it, as you move to containers, like how often do you want to reconfigure a running container? 
So multi-tenancy in networking, traditionally, we built IPVPNs, right? And the way we did multi-tenancy was we used VRFs, and we could have like 100 VRFs on a router. Multi-tenancy with containers more likely means spin up 100 containers, one per tenant. And reconfiguration probably means take this container, blow it away, and create a new one. So our way of doing things is very different. So what we've, what we've done to be more sort of cloud native in the container world is we built the Go binding onto VPP. Um, and then what, um, in fact, probably easy, oh, I've got a few more slides, haven't I? Then Rasto is really going to go into um, Contee VPP, which is a CNI for container networking. So it pretty much sits on top of Go VPP and provides container networking. Um, we have a whole bunch of test stuff. I know that um, Ray and the absent SICK uh, Machek were going to present um, C6, so I guess Ray's going to do that on his own. Um, some other interesting test stuff in there, for example, T-Rex is like a high-performance packet generator. So what does all this stuff mean with vectors? You know, how, does it, how does it actually work? So I'll skip through this because it's restating what I've already said. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. So basically, you decompose packet processing into a, a graph of nodes. And by nodes here, we just mean little chunks of code that we kind of chain together. So, you know, classic, you know, you're forwarding a packet, what are you going to do? You're going to get the packet in, you figure out from the driver that this is an Ethernet packet. You then say, oh, actually, we found out that it's IPv4. So we're going to IPv4 graph node. We then do a lookup on it. And then it might well be that we're forwarding it, so we have to rewrite it, put it out of a different interface, that sort of thing. So we break it down to little nodes, which are kind of micro-network functions. Um, and then the packets move through this in vectors. So again, most people have talked about this already, the, the concept, not so much the vectors, but the concept that you know, don't have one interrupt per packet, or don't pull and just pull one packet. You know, try and pull as many packets as you can at a time. So typically, TPTK, we're in polling mode. If the load's high, we might get back 20, 30, who knows, a whole bunch of packets that were waiting for us. So we process them as a vector. And this is where the graph comes in, because the graph nodes fit in the instruction cache. So the goal is that your graph node fits in L1 cache. And if you know anything about CPU cache hierarchies, that's going to give you orders of magnitude more performance than going off to main memory. The packets themselves are prefetched into the data cache. And the other thing to say is, of course, when you do things like lookups, one of the challenges becomes, well, what if you have a million routes in your routing table, as you would in the internet? And the, the answer is, of course, that we can, again, sort of parallelize all those lookups. But it takes a while for memory to get back to us with the first lookup, but we can then be doing the next one and the next one and the next one, rather than stalling, waiting for that first lookup. And, and yeah, I think the, what's interesting about this is, I mean, I'm, last time I programmed an assembler, it was like 6, 6502 or something, and, you know, there was no cache, there was none of this sort of intelligence. But the, the people who built this... Is that back when dinosaurs walked? Yeah, exactly. I, I've been accused of being one. Um, and the people who came up with this stuff, you know, really understand CPUs and modern CPUs and cache hierarchies and how all this stuff works. And that's, that's the genius of it. And the sort of proof is in the pudding. I mean, again, Ray will probably talk about it, but when we went from sort of generation N to generation N plus one of Intel CPU, the performance handily went up because it was taking advantage of it automatically. Um, so in terms of the actual packet pro processing, good, we're, we're going okay for time. Um, so we have the graph we mentioned, so the individual sort of steps in it, the graph nodes. I colored the input ones differently because this is really where it's coming in from your network driver. Um, or, of course, you know, realistically, of course, one thing to say is that it's I would say this, of course, working for Cisco, but it's probably fairly unlikely that people will be deploying this in boxes with multiple network interfaces acting as routers. You know, please don't do that. We want you to buy our routers. But, <laughs> but, so more likely we're talking about something running on the host as a vSwitch, and so quite a lot of your packets are going to be coming in through something like vHost user rather than coming off the net. Um, so you have a vector of packets. They come in. They come from one of the input nodes. And then... As you see, they're going through step by step, rather slowly, because of my useless animation. And the point is, at each point, that first packet in the vector is going to be warming up your L1 cache, and all the other packets in the vector take advantage of that. But of course, we also, in some cases, are going to have to split the vector. So imagine there's an ARP mixed in with a bunch of V6 packets. You'll have to split it, and in that case, of course, the ARP itself will have to warm its own cache up. Plugins. So, you know, as I mentioned, the whole point here is that um, you should be able to add code quickly. We can add it quickly, but so can you too. And so, how how does that work? Well, plugins really, um, you just plug new nodes into the graph, 
they can be run sort of separately from the main um, VPP code base, so they can be you know, effectively first-class citizens, but you don't have to be merged in and go through all the CSIT stuff that people like Ray and Maciek do. Um, so yeah, you're building it yourself, but it, to all intents and purposes, it's, it, it has equal status with the rest of VPP. But of course, also you can have hardware plugins. So you know, imagine you have a NIC, and um, much to Luke's annoyance, this is an intelligent NIC, and this NIC you know, does whatever it might be, IPsec offload. Um, you know, we'd like to be able to take advantage of that. If the hardware supports it, you know, let's do it in hardware, not in software. Right. Oh, yeah, you've got a mic. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as Giles uh, said, uh, the main topic of this presentation is actually the project Legato, which is, uh, uh, which is I would say, a platform for building uh, cloud native network fu uh, functions uh, based on VPP. Uh, so, before we go there, uh, we may need to clarify what actually a cloud native network function is. Uh, you know, uh, according to CNCFIO, cloud native means building the application as a set of microservices, uh, which are, you know, packaged into containers and uh, orchestrated by some orchestration software, typically Kubernetes or, or something else. So uh, with CNFs, uh, basically, uh, we aim to do the same. Uh, instead of deploying monolithic uh, network functions, uh, we split the network functions uh, into multiple uh, loosely capped uh, pieces, uh, deployed as containers, and uh, interconnected, uh, if possible, with the fa uh, fastest uh, links between them. Uh, in case of VPP, uh, we put uh, VPP into containers. Uh, we can use uh, uh, an interface uh, called MEMIF uh, to interconnect the VPPs running in different containers on the same node, uh, and the, uh, in which case the packets would go uh, to shared memory between the containers. Uh, you know, in case that, that the, some of the pods are uh, deployed on a different node, then it is a different story, but uh, in that case we can leverage DPDK, etc. And yeah, to put VPP into containers, we basically need uh, some, some uh, management plane or control plane of, of, of this uh, stuff. And that is basically Gato. That is the control plane part of uh, building uh, cloud native network functions based on VPP. Uh, yeah, this is how it would, like, uh, it would look like uh, in case we deploy this. Uh, uh, into production, let's say we have a two hosts, uh, and we want to deploy some, uh, uh, you know, cloud native network function that, we s that is represented as a, uh, some chain of uh, network functions uh, through which the traffic need needs to pass uh, in order to, to, to uh, you know, to do the overall network function that we need to achieve. Uh, so, in case of uh, this, you know, you have uh, you have different VPPs running on on each node. Uh, we usually use uh, one of them as as the vSwitch VPP, and then we we deploy multiple CNFs on each node. And you know, we need to somehow consume the logical representation of the uh, service function and render that that into physical uh, topology. Uh, which means that we need to have a management agent running in each of the containers uh, uh, deployed on the nodes, and we need to have some entity which basically, uh, you know, processes the logical representation into configuration uh, that will be programmed to each of uh, the VPPs. Uh, and yeah, as I said, uh, Ligato. Uh, is a development platform that allows you uh, to do this. Uh, it allows you to the uh, first uh, to do the the service function chaining, uh, as shown here. Uh, part of it is a service function controller, but even most important part is the is the VPP agent that we deploy uh, together with VPP inside of each container. Uh, so, as we decided that uh, we want to build uh, network functions like this, uh, we pretty much decided that we need to build a new management agent for VPP uh, because, you know, uh, 
those that were available uh, were not re uh, really good fit for the cloud native uh, case. Yep. Um, so in this case then Legato is your control plane agent that talks to your CNI provider. Uh, yeah, in this case, yeah, Legato actually has several components. Uh, one of the components is the VPP agent that sits uh, in each of the containers uh, next to the VPP and is able to program uh, the VPP. And then there is one more component at, at, as part of the Legato project, and that, that is a SFC controller. And that is the component that is able to process the logical representation of the chain into the partial configurations that will need to go uh, into each VPP agent and uh, programmed to VPP. Yeah, it's probably the same with, with conceived VPP. So when we, when we hook in with Kubernetes, we use the VPP agent, but then we don't use the SFC controller for that. Yeah. Unless you're also running CNS as well as Kubernetes, because they, that's where the CNI sort of hooks in with the VPP agent. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, yeah, as I said, yeah, uh, the VPP agent uh, is a new uh, management agent for VPP, uh, which was designed, you know, with, with, uh, uh, for, for this cloud native use case. Uh, we decided to use Protobuf APIs uh, as opposed to NetConf or RESTConf, which you can get from, from Honeycomb. Uh, pretty much the same API uh, that is defined by Proto messages can be used to program uh, the, the, the VPP through any transport that we support. So we, you can either choose RPC-based uh, uh, way of, of putting uh, the configuration to the agent, uh, in which case you would use the REST or gRPC, or you can use the uh, data store way of, of putting the configuration to, to VPP. Uh, for this, we support uh, ATCD, Redis, BoldDB, uh, and we also do support uh, message brokers for streaming notifications. Uh, uh, as, uh, as we were designing this, uh, we decided to use the Go language uh, to build the new agent because uh, we knew from, from the very beginning that we will need to integrate with you know, Kubernetes and Docker and that kind of stuff. So, so, so uh, that was pretty much a clear choice. Uh, and you know, since we need to have the agent packaged into Docker container uh, uh, together with, with VPP or to a pod together with, uh, with VPP, uh, it also has to be compact and small footprint, uh, which would not be the case for the Java-based agents. Uh, but for the Go-based agent, uh, it is actually, you know, just a static uh, binary that, that you put into container together with, with VPP. Uh, yeah, as you probably know, uh, if you want to program VPP, uh, you need to use binary APIs. Uh, uh, those APIs are quite low level. Uh, they use uh, like numeric references to interfaces, and uh, you, you get byte ordering issues there, and uh, you use Bitflex to to configure your stuff. Uh, as part of the building the agent, we we created the Go VPP uh, project, which is part of the FDIO, and that is basically uh, Golang wrappers over binary APIs. So you have binary APIs, and we we produce the uh, generator that is able to. Uh, generate the Go structs that, that uh, basically reflect the binary APIs. And part of the Go VPP, we have a, a small infra that, that is able to you know, marshal and unmarshal the Go structs into binary and send to VPP and uh, communicate with VPP. The VPP agent is, uh, the, is part of the Legato platform or project, so it is not part of the FDIO. Uh, it uses Go VPP to talk to uh, VPP, uh, and as I said, it provides more high-level uh, APIs. So, uh, you know, in case you you would need to configure uh, VPP or binary APIs, you need to care about the uh, about the versioning because uh, each version of uh, VPP may have different version of the binary API, and that needs to exactly match. Uh, then you need to care about message ordering. Uh, for instance, if you want to configure an interface and have a static route that is pointed towards the interface, you first need to create the interface, apply IP address, and then create the static route. So this is what 
uh, VPP agent does uh, for you. You just put uh, everything what you need to have configured on VPP to the VPP agent, and it would automatically handle all dependencies uh, between the configuration items. Uh, it would handle some error states, so it is able to to, uh, to do the retries on error or, or, or some auto healing. Uh, it is able to handle restarts, uh, etc. Uh, it is also very modular, so uh, if VPP is a set of plugins for, for the, uh, you know, for Varding, then VPP agent is a set of plugin, uh, plugins for uh, management. So if you, for instance, develop a new, uh, new VPP feature, uh, you would uh, build it into a VPP plugin. You can uh, similarly be, uh, write a new plugin for the VPP agent and uh, just put it into the infra. And uh, VPP agent, uh, we package together into a Docker container uh, with VPP. So if you take any version of the VPP agent uh, Docker container, you always have uh, the management agent with uh, VPP inside the, uh, the same container image, so you have no versioning issues. Uh, this, is, uh, this picture shows some architecture of the VPP agent, as I said, uh, you know, the center part is, uh, is the plugins uh, that are used to configure uh, VPP through binary API. Uh, apart from VPP, we do have also Linux plugin, which can configure, you know, the, the Linux uh, interfaces and, and stuff like that, that which is needed uh, in case you need to use this for containers. And the bottom part is the uh, APIs that, that we expose. Uh, as I said, uh, you would use the same, uh, sa same protobuf API data model uh, for any transport that we support. Yeah, and uh, so, so this was basically the infrastructure part, the Legato project. Uh, so as I said, the Legato provides the VPP agent uh, plus the service function chain controller. Uh, which can be used to, to build the, uh, the forwarding chains. The Conti VPP is actu actually an application of the VPP agent. So we took the VPP agent and integrated it into Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, basically, we just extended uh, the APIs of, of the VPP agent in the Legato project and, you know, uh, uh, we, we just added a uh, Kubernetes API on top of it, and as the result of that, uh, Conti VPP is basically a CNI plugin, generic CNI plugin, uh, which can be used in any Kubernetes cluster, uh, and uh, if you deploy it, you get VPP running on each node, uh, providing the, the connectivity to, to the containers. Uh, and at the same time, it still exposes the same APIs as the Legato VPP agent, so if you want to, you know, if you want to extend the default behavior of the CNI plugin, you just use those APIs to, you know, for instance, create a new interface into, into the pod, uh, which would be used for some different purpose. Uh, this uh, shows some architecture of, of uh, Conti VPP. So with Conti VPP, after you deploy it, you, you get a Conti V switch running on each node uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, inside of the vSwitch pod, you have uh, VPP and the VPP agent. And uh, of course, you can, uh, you can use uh, the APIs to, to somehow program the VPP, but you automatically get uh, the programming of the Kubernetes uh, pods connectivity from Kubelet through Contiv CNI. And, uh, you know, apart from, from the CNI plugin, we have another uh, another connection to the Kubernetes state of, of the cluster through our components Conti, CRD, and uh, KSR, uh, which are basically just the reflectors of the Kubernetes, uh, you know, uh, view on the cluster into our instance of ATCD, which is uh, basically uh, consum consumed by each agent in the cluster. Uh, this is how networking looks like if you used uh, Conti VPP. Uh, this is uh, on two-node cluster or multi-node cluster. Uh, this is what you get by default. So, as I said, one VPP on each node uh, connected to uh, to uh, data interface through DPDK uh, interface. 
And then uh, we have uh, one verb uh, for pods. Uh, we, that, this is basically just a preparation. Uh, later, we, we want to provide multi-tenancy, so you could have mul multiple verbs per tenant. And uh, each verb could be, you know, each set of the pods could be separated from, from the other tenants. And then you have a bridge domain that is used to interconnect, uh, uh, to form the overlay network and interconnect between the nodes. Uh, and you know, each pod is by default connected to VPP through a tab interface, uh, only because we need to support any generic application. So either you have you know, a web server or database running in the pod, it needs to work. Uh, but of course, uh, there are options for, for faster uh, connections than, than the tab interfaces. And that would be on the next slide. So what I've, I've shown on the previous slide is basically this cloud verb part of the picture. So if you deploy Conti, uh, automatically with each pod, uh, you would get uh, an interface connected to the cloud verb on uh, Conti VPP uh, running on the host. And as I said, you can still use uh, all the APIs that we provide in the Legato VPP agent to, for instance, create a uh, faster data plane uh, inter interconnects between the vSwitch uh, VPP and the VPP that may might be running in the container. Uh, and you can use SFC controller, which is part of the Legato part, to orchestrate by basically this, this left part of, of the vSwitch picture. Okay. It's not part of the an extension, the API extension beyond the SFC controller. Uh, well, SFC control is part of the Legato project. It's open source, and uh, the Conti VPP is just you know this this part of the picture. But you can deploy it together on the same cluster. Currently, the SFC has only its own API, uh, but there are other options. You can you can actually use. Something else instead of SFC controller, for instance, there is a network service mesh concept, and that would be another way of doing this, this change. Uh, okay, I think we are running over time, so I'll just briefly go uh, through some load balancing stuff that we do with Conti VPP. Uh, with uh, Conti VPP CNI, uh, we have uh, our own implementation of QProxy, which is running completely in the user space uh, within VPP. Uh, this shows how, how the programming of the QProxy uh, uh, looks like, uh, quite compl complex and complicated. Uh, but the key me message is that uh, you know, we do all the load balancing and netting on VPP, uh, so, so you don't need to run QProxy unless uh, you want to have a pod that is connected to the host networking, in which case you could still use QProxy to, to do the load balancing and uh, netting. Uh, this example shows uh, some deployment with Conti VPP. Uh, there is actually a mistake. I have two replicas of Nginx uh, defined here, but there are three replicas running in the actual cluster. Uh, so I defined a replica set with, with uh, three uh, web servers. I covered that by a service uh, of type load balancer, which exposes basically two uh, virtual uh, IP addresses uh, that are knotted to one of those backends. Uh, in case of cluster IP, that is an IP address that works within the cluster. In, st in case of external IP, you need to have an external load, ba external load balancer. In this case, we have Metal B load balancer that is configured here, uh, running in L2 mode. Uh, this would uh, be the configuration uh, of VPP that is rendered from that, that type of, of deployment. So we have a one internet, uh, gigabit Ethernet interface that is the BPDK interface uh, used for connecting the node. Uh, this one tab interface is actually the interface that goes to the top, uh, uh, to the pod, and those VXLAN tunnels uh, are tunnels that go to, to the other nodes in the cluster. Uh, this is the NAT uh, rule uh, for the service that I have just deployed on the previous slide. So, so you can see that bo both virtual IP addresses are NATed uh, to local IP addresses of the pods. 
and uh, for the for the external IP, uh, one of the VPPs in the cluster acts as uh, or responds to ARPs uh, using the proxy ARP. So in case uh, we had this kind of deployment, two nodes, external load balancer, uh, some router, uh, then uh, you know this VPP, for insta instance, would respond to that ARP request for that uh, virtual IP, and all the traffic would be basically routed towards this node. And together with traffic policy cluster, it can be still load balanced on VPP uh, to the other node. There is another mode of running these kinds of to kind of topologies, and that is BGP based. Uh, in which case, uh, you know, both VPPs would would uh, advertise uh, those uh, virtual IP to to the router, and then you could have uh, proper load balancing. So this is one of the applications of the Ligato VPP agent, actually. And uh, now, Giles, yeah, I'll try will... <laughs> I'll try and wrap it up quickly. But yeah, this is another application, newer. I mean, I guess, yeah, we're talking about history. Yeah, I mean, about Ligato, one year. The first thing we did with Ligato, actually, was um, a cloud-based CMTS, uh, which I think is, is, was announced last year. Um, but that was sort of internal proprietary. You know, if you want to, if you want to do cable broadband, here's a cloud-based way of doing it. The next thing was Conceive VPP, which we open sourced. Um, and then we're now looking at other applications. And here's an example, which is IPsec. Um, so VPP has IPsec today. Um, it has a full implementation with you know, the forwarding plane, so IPsec, we have ESP, tunnel and transport, v4 and v6, all the various authentication and encryption algorithms that I don't really understand. Um, on the control plane side, it has an IPv2 initiation and responder capability, and that has been interop tested with various other stacks. But the, um, I guess what we're seeing, though, is that people are saying, well, VPP is more about data plane. Um, and these existing control planes, like StrongSwan, are very popular, very well known, uh, and well understood. And they have you know, great sort of HA modes and that kind of stuff. So why don't we leverage those? So today, typically, we see deployments where people are rolling out StrongSwan in virtual machines. Um, and it'll just be a you know, StrongSwan daemon using the Linux kernel for its forwarding, um, you know, programming it through NetFilter. Um, so the first step is to, you know, to plug VPP in to the VM. And again, we can, there's a couple of ways we can handle that. Um, we've done things like intercepting NetFilter calls, but ultimately StrongSwan has um, it's called Vici. It has its own kind of API for, for hooking things in. So we're integrating with that. Um, but really, you know, where we want to get to is these containerized deployments. So um, having a separate sort of containerized instance of that um, and then still having a vSwitch in front of it um, and as Rasta was talking about with Memif, so um, you know, a single copy memory interface between a vSwitch instance, which might be doing VXLAN tunneling or whatever, um, to talk to the outside world, um, but then the VPP instance in the container that's doing IPsec. Um, and so you told a very strong story about integrating Kubernetes with, yes. uh, with, uh, with Legato and then the, the local, uh, sorry, Contiv and then Legato, yeah. the local agent. So, so where does strong song play in this? Is it is it are you building something like a a a a, a, a second appliance or something like yeah, that? Yeah, this would be that, that kind of stuff. So you'd still have, and I guess that's what we come on to, you know, eventually you want to integrate with Kubernetes. So using something like Conti VPP. The benefit of Conti VPP, I guess, is that we just run one V switch for both the sort of IPsec data plane but also for the Kubernetes kind of control and management plane. But I guess the other thing to think about with the stuff we're doing with Memifs. I know um, there's a talk coming up on, it's the next one, isn't it, about Maltus and stuff like that. And I guess that's what's interesting is these different approaches. <coughs> you know, our approach is to say, well, let's just have one interface that Kubernetes knows about, use that for the controller management plane, and then we spin up these additional interfaces through the Legato SFC controller, um, or in this case, we'll have a, almost like a strong swarm controller that's based on the SFC controller. And those are kind of off on the side from Kubernetes' point of view. Um, and we use those for, for the network data planes. But that's the kind of end goal is to have it, um, yeah, so Kubernetes can, um, you know, Kubernetes can take care of the placement piece of saying, okay, you know, how many, you know, run these as a replica set. Like, how many instances of these do we want to run? Where do we run them? If one of them dies, spin up a new one. Um, but then, have the separate StrongSwan controller based on the SFC controller, which is programming these individual um, VPP instances in the containers rather than the shared one in vSwitch. So 
you might imagine, you know, you're accessing corporate VPN at massive scale. The clients are all out of this end, coming in through a VXLAN tunnel, um, kind of like what uh, Rasto was showing before with VRFs or bridge domains on a per um, sort of multiple VRFs. So one really for sort of southbound encrypted traffic, um, and then another one northbound for the unencrypted traffic, which is then heading off to your whatever your secure applications are behind this. Um, and the, you know, I guess the goal is to be able to horizontally scale these instances of StrongSwan. Um, the challenge, of course, with the horizontal scaling becomes that you, um, if you get any kind of rehashing happen, so like one of the containers dies and everything gets rehashed, then you'll get a packet for which you don't have session state. So you have to then have other ways of handling that. So for example, another KB store on the back end where you know, this container dies and this one gets their packet, it can look up, oh, what's the state for that session? Um, but as I say, StrongSwan itself has some pretty good HA, so you know, there, are, there is stuff we can do where a certain number of failures can be handled simply through StrongSwan's own <coughs> And that's you know, a good reason for using it. I think that was it, yes. So any questions? Other than from Ray. <laughs> yeah, so, go on. Okay, there is a conflict with uh, VPPs, you know, like plugging for Kubernetes, but I also saw a project from Intel which is called uh, User Space here, like plugging. I don't know whether you heard of it. They are not related. Okay, so what's your, what are your thoughts about this? I, I didn't try both of them in practice, but I saw that uh, Intel's you know, like plugging for VPPs. <laughs> Like small binary, it doesn't put any additional demos, but at the same time, it doesn't put any network policies, for example. So it's like straight, straight from like having small architecture, but I think it's really also a lot. So I'm going to talk about user space next, um, and I agree, but yeah, I can get into that next. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm very curious about that. Yeah, I think Intel's one was really like kind of a pro proof of concept of CNI, uh, whereas with Conti we implemented full, you know, uh, support for Kubernetes services and policies. Uh, I haven't talked about that, but policies are also implemented on VPP completely. Uh, so we, we program ACLs on, on VPP uh, on, on the interfaces uh, facing towards spots. So I think that, that uh, Conti VPP is like, uh, you know, more fully featured than, than that one. Okay. okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I guess if there's more questions, come and grab us after. So